FIA precedent got a bombshell from F1. The world of Formula 1 is never short of drama, but this latest news takes the cake. In a recent turn of events, the FIA president received a bombshell that is set to shake the foundations of the racing community. Are you ready to find out what it is? Buckle up and hit play to discover the latest twist in the F1 saga. In the run-up to the 2023 Formula 1 season, FIA president Mohammed bin Sulayem has been drawn into a number of different controversies. The most significant source of friction has been the discussion regarding the potential addition of new teams to the grid. In addition to rumours regarding the possible sale of the sport's commercial rights, the Formula 1 racing series is no stranger to disagreements and controversies. However, the sport's most recent saga does not concern the design of a front wing or the implementation of a racing law. Rather, it centers around Mohammed bin Sulaim, the president of the Federation Internationale de l'Automobile. The Federation Internationale de l'Automobile, which is the world's regulatory body for motorsport, oversees several other types of racing, but Formula One is undeniably the organization's showcase competition. Ben Sulaim, who was elected to the job in December 2021 and is a quarter of the way through a four year term, has had a very exciting first year in the position. His first year in the office has been marked by a number of noteworthy occurrences. According to all accounts, Ben Sulayem has done a good job of managing the governance of the actual competition. However, his recent involvement in the possible entry of new teams and the potential sale of the sport's commercial rights have caused a significant amount of commotion. His involvement has been very public. All parts of racing are governed by the FIA, which was established in 1904 and has its headquarters in Paris. The FIA is in charge of regulating competition at all levels, from the grassroots to the Formula 1 level. This includes the distribution of licenses and permits to drivers and teams, as well as the establishment of safety requirements. While the FIA is in charge of Formula 1, it does not presently hold the economic rights to the sport. Formula 1 management, the business that owns such rights and has an approximately 90-year extension on its long-term contract, is the owner of those rights. The great bulk of the revenue generated from the sport's broadcasting rights, the value of which has skyrocketed in recent years, goes to FOM, which is controlled by the American corporation Liberty Media. While the FIA is a non-profit organization whose primary objective in principle is to safeguard the future of Formula 1 and racing in general, FOM and F1 are businesses that are working to increase the sport's potential to generate revenue from spectators and sponsors. Given the phenomenal expansion of Formula 1 over the last several years, there is possibility that the FIA could come to regret the fact that it will not have control over the very lucrative commercial rights until the next century. In December 2021, Ben Sulayem was chosen to succeed Jean Todd as president of the governing body of racing, making him the first individual from a region outside of Europe to hold this position. The 61-year-old man, who was born in Dubai, has won the Middle East Rally Championship a total of 14 times. He has also served as a member of the World Motorsport Council and as Vice President for the Sport at the Federation Internationale de l'Automobile. Ben Sulayem made a number of campaign pledges for his next four-year tenure, including commitments to quadruple the number of people participating in motorsports, establish governance structures that are in line with best practices, and increased diversity and inclusion efforts. Max Verstappen had recently defeated Lewis Hamilton to win the 2021 World Championship, and the circumstances surrounding the victory were very contentious. When he took over the position, Formula One was in the midst of a very volatile time. Hamilton's Mercedes team were pursuing significant action over the incident, with former race director Michael Massey finally stepped down by the FIA. Despite the fact that the newly implemented system almost certainly experienced some growing pains during the 2022 season, the FIA was seen to at least be on the right track toward addressing the vacuum created by the previous race director, Charlie Whiting, who passed away unexpectedly in 2019. Ben Sulayem received praise for his handling of the cost cap scandal, which resulted in Red Bull being fined and reprimanded for exceeding the expenditure limit for 2021. Although neither Red Bull nor its competitors were entirely content with the conclusion, the authoritative and clear-cut way in which a final decision was arrived at was praised by everyone involved. Ben Sulayem's life seemed to be going swimmingly as the drama surrounding the cost cap had been resolved. Formula 1 was about to begin its 2023 season, and there was a good chance that the championship would be decided by an exciting three-way duel between Red Bull, Ferrari and Mercedes. Despite this, the FIA head has had a very difficult month so far, and it all started with conversations about the possibility of new competitors entering the sport. 
Bensal AM gave his approval to a cooperation between General Motors and its luxury brand Cadillac after Michael Andretti had spent years trying to persuade the FIA to support his F1 bid. This was Andretti's greatest victory to date in his pursuit of the Formula 1 championship. However, in order for the potential Andretti Cadillac entry to be allowed on the track, which is not expected to happen till at least the 2026 season, the FIA and Formula 1 need to give their approval. Formula 1 released a statement indicating that the American team was not the only interested party and that they would not be assured in a position on the grid. Ben Soleim moved to his own Twitter account in order to post a statement in which he expressed his astonishment at the adverse response to the offer. It is known that many of the sport's 10 currently active clubs have harbored misgivings over the proposal. In a subsequent statement, Andretti lashed out at the other F1 teams, claiming that their opposition is all about money and that they are not looking at what is best for the sport. It is understood that the current entrants feel that the anti-dilution fund figure does not reflect the recent growth of the sport and that they would be less worse off by allowing the field to be enlarged if they did so. Since 2021, there has been a fee of $200 million in place for any new team to join the sport. However, the fee has been in place. James Vowles, who was just this year became the newest team principal in Formula 1 when he was hired by Williams in January, outlined what seems to be the perspective from the majority of the paddock. Valls, who formerly worked for Mercedes but is now employed by Williams, said that the fact behind it is that the sport is getting more and more successful financially. Whoever participates in that atmosphere has to bring with it effectively the development that is necessary in order for everyone else to be in a better position or at least a neutral position, says the quote. If not that, then at least a position of neutrality. Ben Sulayem ignited yet another scandal when he used his personal Twitter account once again to respond to rumors about the potential sale of Formula One's commercial rights. Relations were already tied before he did this. Ben Sulayem voiced his concerns about the potential consequences of an inflated takeover in response to reports that Saudi Arabia has made an offer of $20 billion to buy the rights from Liberty Media. These potential consequences include higher ticket prices for fans in the event that the new owners try to recoup their investment. In addition, he said that anybody interested in purchasing Formula One should come with a clear, sustainable strategy rather than simply a lot of money. According to Sky Sports News, top F1 executives were incensed by Ben Tuleyem's words before a letter leaked in which he was accused of inappropriate involvement. The letter was written before the leak. Sky Sports News obtained a copy of the letter in which Saka Woodward Hill, General Counsel for Formula One, and Renee Wilm, Chief Legal and Administrative Officer of Liberty Media Corporation, said that Ben Soleim interfered with our rights in an unacceptable way. In addition, the letter was sent to each of the 10 Formula One teams. Neither Formula One nor the FIA has issued a statement to the public. Ben Soleim made those remarks in reaction to a story that was published by Bloomberg News a week ago, which said that the National Wealth Fund of Saudi Arabia had considered making a takeover offer for the sport in 2022 that was worth $20 billion. Ben Soleim seems to have a lot of work to do in order to repair his relationship with the F1 executives and teams, but he also could be headed for a clash with the drivers. Earlier in the month of January, Ben Soleim made the announcement that Formula 1 drivers are not permitted to utilize the platform that is granted by the FIA to make remarks for their own personal agenda. As a result of recent changes made to the International Sporting Code, drivers will be required to get prior written authorization from the sport's governing body before making political, religious or personal remarks. Any driver who makes such a comment beyond this point will be in violation of the regulations unless they have written authorization from the FIA. Lewis Hamilton, a seven-time winner of the World Championship, is one of the high-profile drivers who made remarks along these lines in recent years. In addition to advocating for human rights and racial equality, Hamilton has spoken out on the need for LGBTQ rights in traditionally conservative countries like Saudi Arabia, which has hosted two races since 2021. The Britain has not made any statements on the new regulations and it is still unknown if he will opt to comply with them when the new season starts in Bahrain at the beginning of March. That's all for today, folks. We hope you enjoyed this latest update on the bombshell delivered to the FIA president in the world of Formula 1. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more racing news and updates. Until next time, keep your engines revving and catch you all in the next video.